Christ. The psalmist says, We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jehovah, Almighty. We, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Jehovah, Almighty. Praise Him. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Oh, yes. We praise you, Jehovah, oh, Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jehovah, Almighty. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We are about to hear your word, Lord. We are so openly and so receptive that we want you to fill us to the brim and even overflow. We want more of you in abundance of your blessings even through your word. And we receive because you've done for us beyond even what we can pray and comprehend with. Through Christ, our Savior, our Master, and our Lord, the only one of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And now as we take our Bibles, our subject this morning is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is thanking God. And how to thank God is to show gratefulness and also gratitude. When you show that you are grateful and uh, show your gratitude to God, that tells and shows how you, you, you appreciate what the Lord has done for you. And by so doing, whether you think you are just doing something ordinary or what, God accepts it as thanks. You see, if God wants food or meat or anything better we put value on, he, he wouldn't have come to us for them. Because he had them in abundance and he is the owner and creator and owns all. But the one thing that God can do is for God to stand aside and see himself and thank himself. That, that's just impossible. So we being the handmaid of God that has been wonderfully made and created with all his types and his image that will come to him and show our gratefulness and show our gratitude to him that Lord, we thank you. And we thank him according to how we see him. The way I will thank God, the way I will show my gratefulness, might probably not be the way you will do. Because you might think him in a bigger size of what he has done so valuable. And someone else might think, Otherwise, not probably equal to your value. But listen, whether or not, our God is great and he is good. His mercies endure it forevermore. The church needs to thank God and thank him and thank him and thank him in all 
ways, giving him thanks. As I said, it's gratefulness. That means when you are great, the only way you show that you are great is when your greatness is full. Then otherwise, when you are less, that means you are not great. So great is full. When your great is full, that is where you show gratitude. When you see what God has done for you, and you have become so great, you are not less to other ones around you, then you show gratitude. I have my health. That means I'm great. I have full health. So I have to give the strength I have received to praise God. I will use the strength that God has given to me, the life he has given to me, the breath I am breathing. Last I was looking at it and I said, when did I start it? that I am in my 58th in years? May, we started with many and they're gone. But I'm alive. So why don't I give praise to God? Let's take it for even an example. The great nation of United States of America, which we are in. The establishment and how it came by. Some people sometimes somewhere around Europe, closely in Europe, London, and Spain. And according to the story, there was some martial laws detecting and controlling and they took a decision that let's go and find ourselves a place where we will have our liberty and freedom to serve and live our life and enjoy our life the way we want it. Instead of someone controlling us and doing things which are not from within. So the Bible says, I mean, the story says, they came and all the way with their sheep and never perished, got to the shore. Some of them didn't survive. They came even how to get something to eat was challenging. The things they went through even that time of winter and all these things, by the grace of God, they all did not die. Some survived. At the end of the day, they had strength. They farmed and the Lord rained upon it. And it was, I mean, it yielded. So they said to themselves, excuse me, if we don't have anything at all in our head, we can look back where we're coming from and where we got to. And when we came, we were living on people's hamla. That means spare me something. People will import food for them to get surplus to eat. People we came to sojourn with would only be a blessing to us before we eat. But now we've been able to work with our own hands and have got our own food. According to them, somewhere back 1620s, they decided, let's set this day a day of thanking God. If nothing at all, we have our freedom to make our decisions. We own ourselves. We are no more suppressed. We own a territory all before us. And that is why, if you hear them, America keep on saying, we are a great nation. We are a great nation. Listen to me. The day America will cease to be grateful to God, their greatness will cease. It is only great people that has great food that praises God. That praises God. And there are so much and etc. to emulate. There was a story in the Bible about the Israelites. How God made them different. Others were depending on food. They worked with their hands to eat. But God gave them manna. Manna will rain like I mean, water come from above. 
they eat free and eat free and live free and breathe free, move and ride on the planet Earth for over 40 years and yet did not change their very shoes. No sickness. Of course, when they got to the promised land, the same time, the manna ceased. They have to work with their hands in order to eat. And God prosper even a rocky land to yield bountifully. So they said, we will set a number of weeks that when you added, make crops yields. So that we will use that day to give God as a day of week of feast. So God himself established it. That when you get to this land and you make something from the ground and you can make your own production, make it as a thanksgiving day unto me. So Israelites are even celebrating this day in their calendar as the day of weeks of festival, as the day when the same time the Pentecost fell. So the Pentecost day is the same as the week that they were celebrating bountiful harvest of their fruits. So, look at how great Israel is. Because they know and have understood the Lord's principle of thanksgiving. And by thanking God all the time and celebrating this day, they keep on becoming more and more great. Because they are grateful to God, God is making them a great nation, even though Israel is just like a size of New Jersey. And yet on planet Earth, people dare not to touch them. Listen to me. Things that Papa Trump said about North Korea president have been spoken worse by Israel leadership. Let me tell you the truth. At a point in time, Israel leadership uh, uh, ask for permission for them to deal with them if the world wants to be ig ignore them. And I did not see them replying them. But Papa Trump just said a little. They keep on giving him all kinds of names. What am I talking about? There is a saying in our traditional language Asem Surabodri say. Trust me. Though it's a little country, you dare not venture. Because there are certain principles God has set down that they are following it as rules. So even when they are wrong or right, there is a backing of God on them. That's what I want to say. You can't just say you will wipe them and succeed. I will give you some more examples today from our readings. To prove to you that when you are grateful to God, God will make you great. Because it is only people that are great that can be grateful. If you are not great, you can be fool. And it is when you are great, that is where you are grateful. So know people by how they are. And grateful people shows their gratitude. You do little things to them, they appreciate it. Now, uh, when we were in the fasting and prayers, I don't know what was going on. But the Lord consecutively and persistently was taking me through some things in my life, even how I wouldn't and I shouldn't have still been alive. And how and why he has kept me to this time. And I said, God, why this time of fasting and prayers? And God was revealing this thing and repeating them to me. Oh, he was trying to get my attention that this is such I have preserved you for. I have kept you and you are still alive. And this is what I want from you. And so when you do it more, I can give you life guarantee that you are safe. And I said, mm, God wants me to be grateful. 
God is just turning me back to know that it's not just because I'm handsome. It's not just because I'm special. It's not just because I'm different. But just because of his love for me. So I became so humbled to know how to show my gratitude to God and give him thanks for all what he has done. And one of the instant I couldn't control, I shared with some of them that were then there. And it was such an instant. It is when I grow now, I ask myself, had it been now, I wouldn't know how I should have handled it. Probably now, one, one before they came, I, I would be dead long. I remember one particular instant when I happened to be in my father's, my mother's side of the land in Ghana, Sechredumasi. We used to go to Sechredumasi those times when we are on vacation so that we can work. Sometimes we go to weed, those days we call it CDCD. CD. We go to weed and corn plantation and we get more money and then take care of things when school reopens. And those time also, at the night, we create a trade where we sell uh, colorism. And those days, you carry the colorism on your head and you walk around and you call. They call you in the house at the night. You go and fetch for them from the funeral. And that's how we were making our money. One particular night, it rained so terrible. And all the house wouldn't like to go out. And I said to myself, I will go. I covered my currency in gallon. I put one bottle holding. And I was walking. And those days when you have a coin, in order to make advertisement for them to know currency seller is around, you beat the bottle. K -k 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 and people were calling me all over. Those days, you take about one week to sell one gallon. That night, I sold one gallon. I went back to the station. I bought another gallon. And people saw that the market was getting good. And when it gets deep into the night, then we all go to the Seco City Main Avenue. That's the only city in Ghana. That have two dual courage. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's no challenge. So we went to the station at the night and we want to go and sell again. And so when those sellers, we all sit around a particular arena and that time all the sellers knew how much I have sold. And they were just coming fresh. And all, the way we catch our customers is when someone is coming to buy corrosion at the midnight, she, he or she will beat the borrow. And then you will run. The first person that will get to where the, sell, the buyer is coming, you sell for the buyer. And that's what makes me a very great sportsman. Oh, trust me. Those days when I hear a borrow is beating, you can't beat me with that race. And then when we were sitting, in groups conversing, we heard a bottle beating. Oh, we were run, and I got, fed, got there first. I took the bottle from the customer, and there was a guy that was half mad. He wasn't good in the mad, in the mind. And he said, No, he knows the person, so he will sell to the person. And that town, everyone have declared that person that. When we don't argue with him because they know his state of life. I said, no, that's not it. Then the buyer also confirmed that he, the person is his relative, so he will buy from you. I said, whether he is your relative or not, that's not our rules here. And you know, I've been that from my infant. When I'm right, you don't take my right from me. I said, our rules here is who comes first, sells. So he wants to take the bottle from me, and I say, no. Oh, my goodness. As I'm talking now, it's like fresh in my eyes. 
This guy took the borrow one and he hid it on the ground. And then he point the other side to me. That was the time this African number one goalkeeper, Robert Mensah, has been killed by the same ball. And he said a word, I'm going to kill you today like Robert Mensah killed, was killed. And this guy was coming on me with the borrow. And as I'm standing here, you know, people were all down because they know that is the end. And something fell in my heart. If you run and he chase you, he will kill you. So I don't know what happened. I faced this guy. Oh, I wish that would have been recorded. How the guy was down and how I took the bottle from him and how at long last people have to come and save his very life from my hand. Oh, our God is good. Our God is good. So you know why I give thanks to God? You know, recently when I go to Accra, anytime I get to a particular place, I begin to thank God and people will ask me, Pastor, what is going on? They will see my mouth talking and I know what I'm talking. Could you believe at long last, even as I am standing here, Kwesi, all the territory that involved where Robert Mensah was killed is my personal property. That is true. You see, what you conquer, you will own it. It's Bible. So anytime when I step there and I get to the point, the area, and I look at it, where I came to Accra and ended up owing here, not knowing I fought it when I was a child. When I was a child. I just thank God. When I turn around and I look at things in that area, people ask me, how would Ashanti own this part of greater Accra? And at a point in time, I started confessing that this place is the heart of Ghana. This place is the heart of Ghana. And people came, all you tycoon businessmen will just come for that portion if I can sell. People will push me, take it and be free in dollars. And I will say, no, how can I sell the heart of Accra if God gives it to me? I held it even when I was in serious poverty. I didn't give it up. Ladies and gentlemen, as I confess consecutively, it's the heart of Accra, heart of Accra. I read recently, and people are not blagging about this. When they tell you, come from, let's say, a large shithole, tell them the center of the world is in shithole. Have you known that it has proven by documentary that the center of the world is in Ghana? Look, I will come and read it to you one day. The center of the whole world is in Ghana. And as I'm talking, the center of the whole world being in Ghana, that is the place I'm talking about. 50, 500 feet within that Sakumono, the point in Sakumono Lashibi is the center of the whole world. Now they are negotiating how tourists, how they are going to set their tower to make their tourists area. It's coming a time you are in that area, it will be what, what we call it a uh, museum. It can be bought without you touching anything. I heard now Ghana Tourist Board has gone about buying places in that area because they want to set the world center. I'm saying something that is documentary proof. Something we Africans don't talk about. If America has been the center of the whole world, you would have heard it from everywhere. And that is where we're coming from. We are in the center of the whole world. You see, so, sometimes we just have to open our mouth and thank God 
for what he has done. Let's see what tongues does. Can we go to the book of Luke? The gospel according to St. Luke. Let's see from chapter 17. Verses 17. I, I would like us to add 18 and 19. So if you can have it, I will be very happy. No, we are reading, but if you can have 18 and 19 together with it. If it's not there, when we get there, read it from the, your system. What does it say? It says, so Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Start it so that it can get into the recording. Let me say it after you go. Were there not any found, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God? Were there not any found that will return to come and give glory to God? Except this foreigner. Except this foreigner. Foreigner means except this inferior person. Except this stranger. That word putting on the self this foreigner is like putting on you a large shit hole. Undocumented what? There you go. Black or white or green. So, thank you, Mama. I stress here to mean something to you. It's not the color, it's not the race. It's not where you're coming from that makes you great. But what makes you great is your gratefulness to God. So Jesus was telling them that it's not the Israelites or it's not the Jews that are great. But I've seen a great person who has come to thank me. That person had the lifestyle or had an image that was just horrible. That was very shameful even to talk of. He was a leper. And those days, being a Samaria or living in Samaria alone was meant for the cast out. And being in Samaria and also affected or contaminated with a contagious sickness of leprosy. What do we say? Is three trouble. So he was he, he was a, a devoured image. But Jesus was trying to tell them, it's not the image I am talking about. But the heart of the person, though he comes from this background, though this is what he is associated with physically, but such a person has a grateful heart. He knows how to show gratitude. If you read the Bible, the Bible talks about how he showed the gratefulness of God. He said he prostrated before the Lord, he cried louder over and over, thank you Jesus, for I am healed. But let me also tell you, grateful people are people of faith. Tell me a person who is grateful and I tell you a person of faith. I'm saying that because of how he got his healing. The how was, according to the Bible, Jesus was just passing to the southwest or to Jerusalem from Galilee. So when he got there, he only heard that some ten people are loudly calling him from afar. Or oh, he cares less about distance. It's about your heart and calling upon him. 
He said, loudly they were calling consistently, Son of God, have mercy on us. You see, the Bible says when you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. So, so long as they call upon him, he doesn't care the distance. He doesn't care who they are. You can be an African and call upon the name of the Lord and you can still be healed and be great. And so the Bible said they heard him. And when they, he heard them, he said, okay, I need not to do anything. Just go and show yourself to the priest. Because I came not to destroy the laws, but to fulfill it. And the loss was that when you are healed from leprosy, you have to go to the high priest to be examined. So Jesus said, in order for you to know that you are really healed, go to the high priest and show up yourself. Now, what is this? Excuse me. What is this? What word can I use to describe sometimes the ways of Jesus? Listen, faith, people of faith are crazy. Jesus want them to behave as crazy as he was crazy. At least, doctor have to do something on you before you can be healed. Why do you tell them to go and show themselves to the very people that have sacked them from where they live? Because by the virtue of that sickness, those days when you are affected, they separate you from society. You see, it has been a time of immemorial. That great has separate the less. People have put class on you for a long time. But thank God he's come that he will break limitations from your head. You don't like? Oh my goodness. I'm coming and I'm coming, coming a time. I don't need an advert about who I am. But who I am will make an advert for who I am. Yes. It's all about getting close to Jesus. And knowing him and calling upon him. And the Bible says, he, they just obeyed. Say obeyed. And they, they were going. They were going. And people will say, hey, haven't we put you beyond the walls? Why have you crossed the wall? And where are you going? He said, we're going. We're going. Just believe. I told you, faith, faith, faith. Thank God for your name. I like it. Faith can impregnate grace. Grace is Jesus. So Jesus was then telling them that you don't need to be touched. I've already healed you. So long as you have called me, you are saved. But in order for the world to know what I have done, go and show yourself to them. They would have been panicked. They would have discussed and debated this. What about? What about? You know the what about? What about when they meet me? What about when I go and I show my skin and it is still white? What about? Sometimes our what abouts prevents us from seeing the glory of God. But these people defy all their whole about because of their faith that so long as we have called upon the name of God, the Son of God, I am healed. I'm going to show myself that I have met who has power over sickness. And then the Bible says, because of the believed, just on the way going, then all of them, ten of them, they saw that the leprosy is vanished. If you will move, when God says move, if you will hear, when God calls upon you, if you will do what he says you should do, you will see his glory today. But then, the other nine, I can read their mindset. Now, I've been so far away from my wife, my job, and etc. For this time, come on. 
Oh! <laughs> there is a saying that even when you hate an antelope, as for his racing, glorify it. They immediately had an antelope legs where they can run and run fast. And the other one look at it. He said, come on. Whether I can run or not, I will first of all go and show myself to Jesus that I am healed. And even if afterwards, then I'll continue to go and see the high priest. Do you know in wisdom what he had? He was saying that if I need to show myself to the high priest, then Jesus is the higher priest. He is the super high priest. Let me go and show myself to him first. Once a time, a lady said it here. He said, as for me, any time I get a new dress, I want to wear it to church first. I like that. As for me, any time, any time, anything, that will be to God first. Because Jesus was the first fruit. So he needs our first things. Do you know that even the Pentecost day, the Pentecost day we call all the time, it means first fruit? Because that the day the church was born first, that the day Jesus came in the flesh in the form of the Holy Spirit. So everything was about Jesus first. Say with me, Jesus first. Give him a praise. I'm, I'm, I'm liking the story. And so the Bible says, afterwards, he showed himself to Jesus. Jesus did not even tell him again to go and show to any priest. He said, and you are what? Who? That means now your, your healing has become complete. Listen, businessmen. Listen, wives. Listen, church. Listen, dear ones. Has anything started in your hands fresh? Show it to Jesus. Show your gratitude from whatever he has started you with to him. And whether you see it side by side or half by half or whichever desikai it is, will turn to be whole. That is his way. If we will know his principle and way of doing things, we won't be disturbing with so many things at the same time, yet make nothing. God wants us to be grateful. You don't need so much after God has freed you to cross the Atlantic Ocean to land in the United States of America. What else are you looking forward to see or know before you know that there is God? Don't forget, with all and in all things, the stupidity of monkey was where he says, I want to see it before I believe. And they say, okay. God said, okay, if you want to see, the day you hear it, boom, it's already on your chest. And that's your death. Then go and rejoice. I believe. Because he says, I believe. I have it. Because he says, I have it. There you go. Once a time, I was in Ghana when I saw Joel Olsen starting his ministry. And I said to people then that, look, excuse me, that's her nice jovial way. And he says it too. I said, look at this waist. And those days when you see the guy and he's walking, it's like he is going to fall down. Ah, because he said like him. Because <laughs> you are better. If you see Joel Sin personally, you will have more adjectives for me to describe. And this, this link, link boy, up and down. But I told some people, I said with his confession, whether Bible school or not Bible school, this guy will make a mark. For him to say, I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. Uh, today, <laughs> I confess. Then he says, positive. I have hope. Hope is taking me there. Hope is giving me coffee. Hope is giving me tea. Hope is... I say, and there you go. 
Now people are saying all kinds of things. How can you young man make one million dollars a day? Not even one million. When you talk of their offering in a week, you will fall in coma here. And I wonder why people talk so, so many other things and some words I don't want to use about those people. When teenagers go to play soccer and they are making millions contract, why don't you say that they are underage? It is it not a, by the virtue of the law, when that a child works, is it not a child labor? Our footballers back home and all over the world, under 15 years, you are pushing them, they should go to Europe. Those parents should be arrested. And then the footballers, because it's a child labor. What about when the world is making it? They are consistent with their principle. I was going to an uh, Apple Credit Union Bank recently, and a lady I could see was walking so slowly. And I said to myself, let me be patient with this lady. And I pack, and then I pack. And she was walking like today she will fall down. And after she crossed my car, she put her hand on my car's uh, hood. He said, thank you, mister. And I said, thank you, ma'am. You are welcome. He said, you know what? That, a brother would like to say everything to people. White people, they want to say everything. You know what she told me? I have a baby. I want her to be a swimmer. So I'm crossing to the other side. We're going to make a swimming practice. I saw oh, the world. <laughs> you understand me? That was an area that has been set for swimming. So she's going to swim. So the baby that is in her womb to recognize and feel the water. So that when she when she brings her forth, she will be already. <laughs> oh, oh my. Are you getting what I'm saying? If it had been in a church room, that I would tell Miss Mary, put Bible on your big stomach so that your baby can hear Bible. The whole church people will say, oh, pastor, what are you doing? <laughs> they do the crazy things and it works for them. But we come out and we say all kinds of things. Let me tell you. Let me tell you one thing. And let the world hear me. If Trump will know how to be grateful to God, there will not be a president that will ever be on planet Earth that will be like Trump. All people that likes him should do to him is to teach him and show him how to be grateful to God. He knows it, but not in full. I can see some signs in him when he is not ashamed to call the name of God. He doesn't care his character. He doesn't care his lifestyle. That guy is bold. He will tell you, I am a Christian. He will tell you Christmas means Christ in, not holiday. He will say it the way it is, negatively. That's a sign of recognition of a one who knows his God. What he lacks is the wisdom about it. And those that like and love him, this is how we should pass out the wisdom. Recently, for instance, what happened in the White House? Have you seen that all the time when, let's say, people fell below their lifestyle, Trump will never condemn them. He will condole with them. And it has the two sides of the coin. Let me tell you one side of the coin is the grace life talking. What I mean by grace life talking is he is trying to tell you that if we are to go by this, then no one fits. I'm telling you the truth. If we want to go by standard of life, and today we will pick a register. Let's start from White House. We won't get anybody to rule us. 
And let's say the White House is not big enough. Let's come even into your house. Because see, there will be a point that will justify Abna to live today. And if Kwesi Asapopenyi is, of course, then let me come down. And that was the reason why when they brought the sinner, Jesus was writing on the ground. Those that brought him, they said, no, no, no. And then when Jesus raised his head, he said, woman, who are those that brought you here? He said, boss, they've all gone. He said, neither do I condemn you. But go and sin no more. That's the life character of Jesus being balanced. As much as he did not condole with those that brought him and condemned them, he, he did not condole with the woman as well. So if Trump was some way, after justifying things and say by grace, Trust me, maybe some of the people you are accusing, they might have changed now. Maybe they might have changed now. Why do you hold them to their past? Is Christianity about the past? If you like, come to even the church room. Go to the pastors. Starting from Billy Graham to me, you will not get a pastor to pastor here in America. Because if it is marking the points, According to the law, it says that when you fail one, you fail all. But it is only grace that has sustained us. But what I don't like about him, which is the other side of the coin, is where when the whole president will gratify people that are fair below the mark and leave the pains of the woman that has been marginalized. That are telling you that Trump, once a time you try to put your finger under my thing, and you will tell him you are not of my size. Did you hear it? I'm going by the news. If a woman is accusing me that I tempted on her, if nothing at all, do I tell her that you are not of my size? Are you telling me that there are levels in human beings? That is the side which is not acceptable. At least tell them, women, we are sorry with what is going on. But let me tell you, no one is perfect. At least you balance the equation. But if we are looking for perfect senators, then let's get ready. The room is going to be empty soon. Very soon, it's going to be empty. Because as we sit here, we have our jackets and gloves covering tents. But thank God we gratify him and show our gratitude for how good our God is. Look at an African that he has sustained us. My, my, my wife went to the bank last week and very unfortunately by the time he got there the bank rules was you deposit the next day before it reflects in your account and so when he deposited not knowing a check also went in the same day so they deducted her 32 dollars or 35 you see how good she is arithmetically so she went to the manager and told her, okay, no, 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 no. And then the manager said, hey, mommy, then why don't you put overdraft protection on your account? And it wasn't even my knowledge. She spoke with them, okay, then we like. They called me, do you like an overdraft in your accounts? I said, what is overdraft? <laughs> I deliberately what this time understand before you sign. <laughs> don't just go by phone call. That's my wisdom. He explained, he explained, he said, said already, oh, I've even gone on the, the, the system. You qualify for $100,000. Can you come down and sign? And this and this and this and this. And I said, oh, trust me, some white man is standing by the roadside. He has no bank accounts in this country. And yet he has a good social security. 
social security with an ascent decree that he is a white. And I have a social security with a comma that I come from a shithole. Where is the difference? Where are the difference? God who holds us. God who holds us. David says something. I've never seen a righteous and even his descendants begging for it. For food. And there you go. I have this my case with me and all that. This week we were about to create our new kitchen. So the contractors were going to come and then Miss Mary sent the family WhatsApp that the whole family, we are closing down our kitchen. So they finished the renovation, not knowing that was a big mistake she made. Then the children jump on it. Yes, we agree. And after they replied the WhatsApp day, they agree. Then they came to me, Dad, then we have to buy. Today we will buy from Tiffany. <laughs> Tomorrow we will buy from McDonald's. <laughs> I saw the list and I said, that doesn't mean the kitchen is closing down. <laughs> you know? And they said, okay, when we close down the kitchen, we don't wash dishes. That's their problem. Not knowing that just the kitchen closing down for them to be exempted from washing the dishes alone was their heaven. You see, different are the levels of food problem. And holy, God just bailed me. It's part of being transferred to God. Yesterday, I went on the table. I saw food came from here. Food. I don't know. People heard it and they were supplying me food. I said, thank God. Your word is always true. You will build the righteous. <laughs> you see, I, I like thanking God for little, little things. Yesterday, we ate from left, right. I, I, I said, oh. If we've been crossing kitchen for a long time, <laughs> I will save. <laughs> I will save some dollars. <laughs> and I have to preach it at church. <laughs> so that people will know my kitchen is crossed. <laughs> it's so interesting. The way, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm showing some interest in how God takes care of us. Because before we were doing this, all what I was thinking about then, how, 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 not knowing God has the how intact, solved. Solved. We just need to thank God. Because he missed provision before the event. I don't want to worry you so much. Let's just get into a few things. We're going to read for the next about 10 minutes closely. Let's pick our Bibles. And give us the whole book of Esther 8. You will see where, what God did once upon the time. And the people of Israel could not cease praising God. And even out of it, set it as a day of thanksgiving. And it became an automatic holiday. If you have heard before in the, one of the calendars of the Israelites about the Purim, the holiday of Purim, which is celebrating in Israel up today, I'm going to give you the background about it. So that you also set a personal Purim in your life. After God has done so many things for you, what are you saying in response? For what he has done. Let's go. On the day. King Ahasuerus gave Queen Esther. The house of Haman. The enemy of the Jews. And Mordecai came before the king. For Esther had told. How he was related to her. So the king took off his signet ring. Which he had taken from Haman. And gave it to Mordecai. 
And Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of Haman. Now Esther spoke again to the king, fell down at his feet, you know thanksgiving, and implored him with tears to contract the evil of Haman the Agagite and the scheme which he had devised against the Jews. And the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king. Please, please, hurry up. And said, if it pleases the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seems right to the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to annihilate the Jews who are in all the king's province. For how can I endure to see the evil that will come to my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my countrymen? Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Indeed, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hung him on the gallows which, because he tried to lay his hand on the Jews. You yourself write a decree concerning the Jews, as you please, in the king's name, and seal it with your the king's signet ring. For whatever is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring, no one can revoke. There you go. So the king's scribes were called at that time in the third month, which is the month of Sivan, on the twenty-third day, and it was written, according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, and the princes of the province from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces in all, to every province in its own script, to every people in their own language, and to the Jews in their own script and language. And he wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus, seal it with the king's signet ring, and send letters by chorus on horseback, riding on royal horses, bred from swift steeds. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. Hmm. On one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, on the 13th day of the 20th month, which Excuse me, let's go back over again. On the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Ada, a copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province and published for all people, for that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The Curls who rode on royal horses went out, hasting and pressed on by the king's command. And the decree was issued in Shushan, the citadel. Hmm. Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had delight and gladness, joy and honor, 
And in every province and city, wherever the Jews command and decree. Let's, let's go back again. We want it right. Is that 17? Go. Go. In, in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of Jews fell upon them. Let's hold on here. Were they Jews that they wanted to become Jews? There you go. Trust me. I'm not bragging. It can come a time. The world would like to be like an Africans. Or Africans would like to be otherwise. It's about the ones that knows they are God. That is all. God created heaven and earth, did not put lines in types and kinds and levels of whom that human beings are. But the kind and type of who you are is by the way we know how you know your God. Listen to me. When prophecies are on it, you don't see. Excuse me. I'm repeating this over and over because I don't take delight in them. When the alleged shit hole came, did you see the first, uh, what we call it, the first state of union, is that state of union? State of union that our president did. Did you see the other white people with kente cloth in their necks? What does it mean? We identify ourselves with them. That is scripture there. That is scripture there. He said other people even in the province of Ahasuerus became like the Jews. If you don't know what an attire means, from spiritual to physical point of view, if someone put on what you wear, it means I am who you are. Sometimes when I talk, you think I'm just talking politics. I'm opening your eyes. If we will know our God, Daniel said it, that the time is coming. Knowledge shall increase on earth. And people that know their heart, they are those who will create exploits. So you should not bother so much where you're coming from, who you are, the position and the post. But you should be grateful to your God who has made you who you are. And that is where you recognize him. That is where you thank him. That is where you appreciate for what he has done. All what we read was them showing their gratitude for what God has done. Today you were sentenced to die. A whole nation. A whole residence. They were sentenced to die. Hopefully you don't understand they were sentenced to die. Let me bring it to your contemporary English. You have received a, a deportation notice. It was written with your name in capital letters. You are going back to where? Kotoka. Whether you like or not, where would they take you to Lomi? You are under deportation, detained to be deported. But it turned around. That's what happened in Hazard's lost time. And rather you became the legislators. You rather turn around and you were making the laws. When I tell you God can bless you here, you don't believe it? Look, there is one thing that can cut someone's hands down. That can cut someone Peter down. And that is the only, the word. Do you know that all the blagging of Pastor, uh, Mr. Trump stands on that, I am a Christian. If nothing can cut him hands down, the word of God can. So whenever they are talking anything about the nation, I talk the scriptural point. This Hazlos, uh, though was a king, 
But God put his fear in him. To touch him to honor his people. And then the people will come back and say we won't honor God. And then the people will come back and say we won't thank God. For what he has done. We have to be grateful to God. We have to be thankful to God. Uh, upon, upon it all, let's just read, if we can get the whole 12, let's, let's just, excuse me, if we can get the whole 9, can we get the 9? If we can't get the 9, pick the Bible. I, I told you we are reading, so nothing is stopping us from reading. Pick the Bible, pick your phones, and let's read the 9 together. Let's give ourselves just a second. We're going to read together. Go to New King James. The Bible of Esther. Is the same thing. The Bible, the book, is the same thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of the Bible. Or oh, from the Bible, how do you want me to say it, Miss Mary? The book of Esther. So the book of Esther is in the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God for Bible. I said chapter what? Nine. Those with phones, those with their Bibles. And this is also a trap to catch you that never come to the house of God with your, without your ammunition. Hallelujah. So we're going to read. The Jews destroyed their enemies. Am I right? Chapter 9. We are reading the whole 9. Let's get ready. And if you want me to, can I say amen? Oh, please. Let's be on our feet. Just to honor God. It's also a way of showing gratitude. Because we will like what is here. Thank you. And it's also a means of stretching. Can I say, God bless you? Amen. And you say, I receive it. Give a shout to the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Now, 10. Now, in the 12th month, that is the month of Ada, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews have hoped to overcome them, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the province of the king Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them, because fear of them fell upon all people. And all the people, officials of the province, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work, helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in king's Paris. And his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai became increasing prominent. Thus the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword. With slaughter and destruction. And did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan... The Saturday, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. Also, Pashadatta, Dolphan, Asfata, Oparata, Adalia, Alitata, Mpamashata. Listen, if you want a nickname, come here. You will get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's start again from Palota. Parata, Adalia, Alidata, Pamashata, Ariasa, Alidai, Envisizata. Then ten sons of Hermon, the son of Hamaditada, the enemy of the Jews. They killed, but 
they did not lay a hand on the plunder. On that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan, the citadel, was brought to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel. And the ten sons of Haman, what have they done in the rest of the king's province? Now, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you, or what is your further request? It shall be done. Then Esther said, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shusha to do again tomorrow according to today's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hung on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was in Shushan, and they hung Haman's ten sons. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the 14th day of the month of Adar, and killed 300 men at Shushan. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. The remainder of the Jews in the king's province gathered together and protected their lives and rest from their enemies and killed 75,000 of their enemies. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the 13th day of the month of Adam. And on the 14th of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Do you know it means holiday? And do you know it means they showing gratitude to God? And now listen, if it sees there, go. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day, as well as on the 14th, and on the 14th, 15th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who dwell in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Ada with gladness and feasting as a holy day and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews, near and far, who were in all the province of King Ahasuerus, to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th day of the month of Ada, as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies. As the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holy day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun, as Mordecai has written to them, because Haman the son of Hamadatha, the Agitai, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and had cast pull that this, the plot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews, should return on his own head, and that he and his son should be hung on the gallows. So they called these days Pulim, after the name Paul. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter, and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them that without fail they should celebrate these days every year 
according to the written instruction and according to the described tab, that this day should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, that this day of Purim should not fail to be observed among Jews, and that the memorial of them should not perish among their descendants. Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihel, with Mordecai the Jews, wrote with full authority to confirm this second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews, to, to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim at the appointed time, as Mordecai the Jews and Queen Esther had prescribed for them. And as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed this matter of pulling and it was written in the book. Give a clap to the name of the Lord. And just stand on your feet. If I would tame all this to one sentence, the work of the enemy has fallen on his own head. And you are the Jews, encrafted, brought into the family. God has received you today. If you believe it, this is the year you wouldn't have survived. This is the year you should have died. This is the year you should have been jobless. This is the year you should have been single. This is the year you should have been deported. But God has turned it around. God has turned it around. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. And let's thank the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, thank him. Wherever you are, thank him. We are thanking you. God, you call us to start a church. And you said you would take care of us. It is for you. The church is for you. Today.